Hi guys, welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to experiment with our watercolor paints. And so in your box you are going to have some beautiful watercolors, um, some brushes, a straw, a small amount of gold paint, a black crayon, um, some washi tape, rubber cement, and your paper. Your, everybody gets 12 pieces of paper. And your artist card, which this month is Andrew Wyeth, okay? So in your paper, what I do is sometimes I use a full um, a full piece, but today I'm going to cut mine in half, and um, we're gonna I'm going to show you some different techniques techniques with watercolor, all right? So if you want to take one of your sheets and cut it in half, or you can use the full sheet too. It's up to you guys. So why don't you grab some uh, jars of water? So I have usually two jars of water. One is to wash out my brush and then the other one I use for clean water. You're going to need a napkin or a paper towel and some table salt. You want to grab that and then we can get started. All right. So first I use a flat surface to put my paper on and I just use the back of a, it's just a piece of cardboard that I have from my um, drawing paper. and. On the watercolor paper, you can see one side is a little bit rougher than the other. It has a little bit more tooth. It's called tooth. So whichever, whatever side you want to use is up to you. All right, and I'm going to take mine down just so that it won't move around um, that much. I'm just going to put a piece of tape on the back. So while I'm showing you guys some techniques, okay? All right. So watercolor is a lot of fun. Um, it does take some time to get used to it, you know, to always be experimenting with it and practicing. So today I want to show you some different techniques. All right, I have several here. And so we're going to just make little squares on our paper and try some different techniques. And you can grab, grab whatever size brush you want. And what I do usually first is just make my brush a little wet. Oh, by the way, when you get your brushes, all the new brushes have all the new brushes have a little bit of glue on them, and so they're just pretty hard. And so what you want to do is just put it in the water and just kind of wash it around a little bit until it's real soft, okay? All right, so we're going to paint probably at least eight, I believe around eight or so squares. And the first technique I want to show you is I'm making my paintbrush wet and we're going to do just a flat wash, okay? So I come over here and right now we're not going to use the, we're just going to use the paints right out of the, the palette here. We're not going to, out of the pans, the little pans they're called. We're not going to mix in the tray today probably, okay? So we're just going to go straight with a wet brush right into the paint, okay? So to do a flat wash, you just grab some paint. So I make my paintbrush wet, I grab some paint, I just kind of twirl my paintbrush around like this, kind of both sides there like that. And then the flat wash is just a flat, just a wash. Okay, I'll show you. I'm going to just paint down, just make a little square. You can see I'm, I'm trying to use the tip of my brush to make it nice and sharp. A little edge. And then you can go back over it too. And if it has too much if you have too much water, you can always take your paper towel and dab up tap some of the paint and water off on your paper towel and then just go back over it if you want. Alright. And that's your little flat wash. I'm going to wash out my brush. I'm going to grab fresh water out of the other jar. And then let's do let's do a wet in wet or wet on wet. Okay, and there's a couple of different ways to do this. One way is you can take your brush and make it a square and just paint with water. I can just make a little square of water. Now you probably, you might not be able to see this on camera, but 
it has a little bit of a sheen to it. Okay, and if it's pooling, like what it right now, see how there's water pooling there? If you can see, if it's making a little pool of water, you know you have too much. So just take your paintbrush and take some of that water off. All right. Then you're gonna grab some paint. Let's see. Let's do so a pink into a purple. So I'm just putting my paintbrush on the paint and I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to kind of dab it and let the paint just kind of run. I'm going to get some new paint, I'll get a little purple. So I made it a little bit too wet. This takes a little practice. <laughs> If you make it a little too wet, just take some of the paint off, okay? All right. I'm going to just leave a little white there. All right. So that's wet on wet or wet in wet. All right. Let's do... I want you to make another flat wash because later we need, we need it to dry. So watercolor, when you're painting with watercolors, um, you always paint light to dark. And you do drying, you can, you know, depending on what kind of look you're going for, but a lot of times it's a lot of drying. So like if I wanted to put, I'm gonna put this little white, uh, this um, flat wash down, and I'm gonna let it dry so that I can paint on top of it, all right? Also watercolor always dries lighter when it's dry than when it's wet. We'll do a little, so why don't you do a little uh, square of flat wash. See how nice this is? It's just kind of blending into each other. I'm going to show you a different, another thing of, uh, this is wet on wet, but if you did wet in wet but you're doing it on dry paper, you can make your paintbrush wet and grab a color you can make a square. Let's say if I wanted to put another color in there. <clears throat> Let me grab some yellow. this as well. You know, you can blend it a little bit to the other two instead of like that. Okay. That's wet and wet on dry. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's do the salt. Salt is kind of fun if you want to make little, mm, sometimes people put it in the sky or like little uh, flowers or something in the background kind of a nice technique. So let's grab some paint. We're just going to make it a little square here. Also you can experiment with different salts, but I just have this table salt. All right, I'll put a little bit on my hand and then sprinkle it on top, okay? I'll just let that sit and you can see what happens. Um, one thing I should tell you is never let your paint brushes just sit in the water, all right? So if you wash out the dirty brush and then wash it here, and then always take it out of the water and set it on your napkin, okay? It's just your brushes will last longer that way. All right, so let's do a lifting, it's called. So make your paintbrush wet and grab a color that you like here. And 
going to paint a square. Oops. So let's say if you're painting and you wanted to maybe make some clouds or you just wanted to lift some of the color off to make a cool technique on your painting, you can just paint and then grab um, a paper towel or a cotton ball or something and wad it up and you could do a little lifting, okay? Like that. I think it looks, it makes a cool texture, all right? So also you can put plastic wrap on there and let it dry and then pull it off and it'll look, it'll kind of give the same kind of technique, uh, kind of, same kind of look. Okay, so now we're going to do the ombre and you can just paint a solid color of, I have red here. I'm just going to add water and help this color down like this. Okay, that's one way to do it. And see if I, if you have too much, you can take your paintbrush. I'm dabbing it over there on my paper towel. You can take some of this off and then go back up. Kind of blend that. Okay, it's a nice little ombre. Another way you can do that, if you take your paintbrush and you make the whole square wet with water, This is kind of nice when you're going to be making like skies or uh, sunsets and you want to make the whole paper wet and start at the top and bring down some colors, have it all blend together. It's kind of nice. Okay, so I have it a little bit sh like a sheen. And then if I put the paint, I'm going to put some red back up here on top. And it'll just kind of start seeping down the page there. Okay, and if you might have to help it out a little bit. I'm going to tilt this. I know it might be out of focus for a second, but I'm going to tilt it. I'm going to help it a little bit here. Whoops, I got outside there. All right. All right. So dry brush is, you just take your paint brush, make it, put some paint on it, make it wet, put some paint on it. I'll do an orange. And then you just paint on the paper and it's kind of a dry look, okay? It's dry brush. Try that one. All right, which other one do we not do? I think this one, this one's dry. So I'm going to show you how to do um, wet on dry. So once you have something, let's say if you're going to paint um, anything. If you're going to paint like uh, flowers or any anything that you want to paint, and you want to, you want to do some details on it, then you can let the first wash dry, and then you go back in and you put some more paint on it. All right. And so this is a nice thing to practice. Also, I just want to show you with this paintbrush. If I take another color and maybe I want to get some green. This is another thing you another thing you guys can do is put some color on there and with the tip of the paintbrush I'm going to lay the tip down, flatten the brush and then bring it up and make like a little leaf. So this is wet on dry. Okay? And you can practice that. It's, it's fun to practice with your paintbrush. See the different uh, shapes you can make, or how you can move it sideways, or use just the tip. Okay, you can practice that. It makes nice petals. If you take your paintbrush and you just put it down, flatten it, and bring it up. Let me put a little more paint on there. So, touch, 
flatten it and bring it up. Okay, you can practice doing that, that's fun. Just moving the paint around. All right, so we have, I'm gonna mark these. This is a flat wash. This is a wet and wet. Whoops. Wet and wet. This is wet on dry. This is another wet on wet, or wet in wet. This is the salt. This is the lifting. This is an ombre, or a blend. This is dry brush. Okay, and then we're, I'm gonna show you a resist. If you take your black crayon, Make a little square. Resist is fun with black crayons or white crayons or also the rubber cement we're going to use later. Okay, so as you know, wherever you put this crayon, the, the paint's going to stop at it. All right. So if I was painting here, and this, this, um, we'll do it later, but the crayon we're going to use where it's, it'll stop the paint, okay? I mean, you can paint over it, but it's it's for for um it's kind of just for fun. All right, and one last thing I want to show you is first. Let's see if this salt is ready. No, it's not quite ready. One last thing I want to show you is using your straw. We're going to do that just for fun too. So, and it's going to probably go everywhere, but I'm going to grab some paint and then I'll show you. I'm sure a lot of you have done this before, but it's kind of fun with either butterflies or flowers, all kinds of stuff. If you put a little a heavy line of paint down on, on your paper or wherever are little balls of it, like little puddles of paint, okay, and then you can take your straw and blow it. Let's show you. I did it off camera there, but okay. It's it's a cool look. All right. Okay, so that is some techniques. I'm going to see if this salt is dry here. It's not. Uh, it wasn't quite dry. I should have used a hair dryer, but it leaves a neat um, technique. Let me show you this one. See this one right here? It's like little flower blooms. Okay. So you have to let it, I just brushed it off, but let it dry longer than that, all right? Okay, so let's do something fun. You've learned some techniques, you guys, this week just practice with your brushes. Uh, use, you know, control the water. As you can see, like, it depends on how much water you use and how things will work. Sometimes, you know, a lot of times everybody uses too much water. But control your water, just practice, and, and go back and forth and you know, make little squares and, and see what's working. How what's too much water, what's what's um, not enough water. And then paint some spot, uh, little flat washes, let them all dry, and then go back and add some color to it and see how that looks, all right? That's good to do too, because then you can start learning about how watercolor works on itself. Um, that sort of thing, all right? This takes a lot of practice. And especially like this wet on wet, it, that takes a lot of practice too. Sometimes it's too much water and it'll run all over the place. Sometimes it's not, not enough and then it won't move. So um, just do little squares, like I said, and just keep practicing, all right? So for fun today, I thought we'd, we could do use this rubber cement. I like doing these little pages, they're a lot of fun. So grab the other side of your paper that you cut in half, and I'm going to just tape down again the back. It's kind of loud. 
Now, when you're using rubber cement, you have to be very careful, okay, because it's very smelly. Um, when I use it, I open up a window or, um, you know, read all of this back here. You have to be very careful with it. It's really smelly and um, the, the, va the vapors can be uh, dangerous if you're not careful. So, when we use it in here in the studio, I open up the windows. Uh, if you have silly fans, turn those on. And also, don't put your face right over it. Okay, work like I'm way over here and my, my rubber cement's way over here, okay? And then we're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna do a little bit of swirling, and then you can put the lid back on, okay, and let it dry and that sort of thing. All right, so this technique is a resist technique that me, for me, it reminds me of batik, where we're going to put the white of the paper, we're going to put the resist down, which is the rubber cement, and protect the white. We're gonna put a wash on, we're gonna let that dry, and then we're gonna put more rubber cement, let that dry. And then you have these layers. You have a white, a pink, a purple, see that? Because you are covering up the paint with a resist, all right? So, here we go. I'm going to just take my rubber cement, and I'm just, you could you can make a heart, or a, you can make, you know, try to control it, or even paint with it and make a design but I'm just going to I just like the abstract and it's just kind of fun to see the thicknesses and the thinnesses okay so I swirl the, the rubber cement on the paper and I let it dry and it's not completely dry but I'm going to just go with it because I'm just for the video here all right so I'm going to grab a, a color I think I'll do the usually it's better if you work light to dark and so I'm going to grab Maybe some light orange. I'm just going to paint straight on the paper. I'm just going to keep taking my water and just making this paint go everywhere. Now you want this rubber cement to be pretty dry because you don't want it all over your paintbrush, okay? So because I have to, because I'm making the video, um, I'm not letting it dry in between as much as you probably should, <laughs> all right? But it's better if you work, maybe you even want to grab a hair dryer or something to dry in between times, all right? It's up to you. So the idea is to paint all around here and just have fun with the um, paint. You know, you can make it wet on wet or if you want it to do a little, make some of the paper wet and put the paint down, you could do that. You could try some different techniques too if you want. What I'm going to do is paint all of this one color and then I'm going to let that dry. Put down some more rubber cement to protect the orange and then put a new color down. Maybe I'll do red. Oops. So these big thick ones are not going to be dry for a while. So maybe you don't want to make them that thick. This big thick uh, piece of rubber cement. That's going to take a little while to dry. Alright, so I'm going to 
dry this with a hair dryer and then I could put the second color on, okay? I'll be back. Okay, now we're gonna put our we're gonna put the rubber cement another layer on to protect the orange. So put all over where we want the orange protected. Okay, remember, work quickly and put the cap back on. And you can see I should have had my, my paper tape down, <laughs> which I didn't do that. I just put a piece of tape in the middle, but you guys should do four corners or put the tape around the edges, all right? So now I gotta let this dry and I'll be right back. All right, so the next color I'm gonna use, I'm going to try, I think I'll do a red. So you want to use colors that will look um, pretty good on top of each other, okay? So you can practice and see which colors you like, but it just depends. Oops, mine's not quite dry as you can see. This project just takes too long to do on camera because the camera um, is a time limit, you know. You have to paint, paint, you know, you have to work fast because the camera keeps, it records for a little while and then it shuts off. So it's one of those things. So I'm not going to do this whole thing. I'm just, I'm just going to show you how it works. So if I paint all this red, now that I've protected the white and I protected the orange, right? And so now I'm going to do red. Now you can keep going. You could put more, you know, layer it. You could, I could put red, rubber cement, another color, and then, you know, stop. Or I think two or three layers is probably plenty. So let's pretend like this is all painted red. And I'm going to dry it real quick and then I'm going to peel it off and show you guys. Okay, so then when it's completely dry, you can take your fingers, and this takes a little bit of time, but you then you peel, you just go back and forth and you peel all this rubber cement off. Okay, so where the white was, protect it, it'll be white. And then where the orange was, That'll be protected too. See the orange? Okay, so we'll have white swirlies, we'll have orange swirlies, and then the red will be the, the main color on the, the thing, okay? So that just takes a little bit of time. Just um, make sure it's completely dry. You guys will have more time at home to just let it sit and dry, just leave it alone, go do something, even come back the next day and um, peel this off, okay? I just want to show you here on the video. But you have this neat abstract painting that you could do a million times and it would always be different, all right? So see, if I wanted to do another layer, I could have protected the white, put the orange, protect the orange, put the red. I could have done another layer of and protected the red and then did another color and I'd have all these layers, all right? So like this one is completely finished. Um, now what you can do is either just leave it or you can take a black pen, some kind of uh, something that you have 
And I've had my students before go around these lines. And this takes a little bit of time, but it really um, makes the line stand out. And it looks kind of interesting, okay? So you don't have to do that, but it's kind of fun too. Another thing you can do is, or just go around the white, or go just around the orange, and kind of outline it. Okay, that's kind of fun. Adds to the painting. Another thing that uh, you can do is look at your abstract and see if you see something in there. Like if you see a, a person's face or um, trees, or you can just make like a little scenery, right? So when I was doing this one, to me, this looks like a hair. This could be like a face with like a neck and shoulders. And this is a person's face here. See that? And this could be their hair. <laughs> okay, so you could draw. Draw within your shape. You know, I could spend time and, and make a little uh, drawing of this area of the paper. Or you could take your abstract piece and make a little, um, a little note, like on a little, say, one by one square piece of paper, and just put it in there. This could be a nice background. All right. Or you could take this and you could glue it onto a journal. <laughs> 